everyone, I'm Dr. Sue Franklin. I'm a Reiki master teacher and a psychologist. And today I want to talk to you about the science of energy healing, mind-body methods. So is it just woo-woo? Many people think that energy healing, energy medicine, Reiki, and techniques like it are just woo-woo or they're just quackery. So do you believe in acupuncture? How about MRIs, electrocardiograms? brain scans, how about ultrasounds or x-rays, radiation therapies, how about laser surgery tools? So if you think about those for a moment, they're actually all methods of using energy in medicine and they're all considered mainstream, although they weren't always considered mainstream. Albert Schweitzer, uh, philosopher, noted that all truth goes through three stages. First, it's ridiculed, then it's violently opposed, and finally it's accepted as self-evident. And we can see this happen over and over and over throughout our history, especially in the sciences, when there were new discoveries. Just look at the whole, <laughs> you know, the earth is round, it moves around the sun. Both of those were considered heresy in their day. And I would argue that energy medicine had a stage before Schweitzer's first stage of ridicule, and that actually was complete acceptance because these tools, these methods have been around as long as humans have been around. So human bodies are built to heal themselves. That's what our immune system is about. We're meant to be healthy and in balance. And I absolutely believe in the human capacity to grow and heal. And for the last 40 years, cell biologists have proven the profound healing capacity of the human body and mind. And the key being that healing is a mind-body process. You can't separate them. Uh, I encourage you to check out Dr. Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, and the books by Dr. Joe Dispenza, they're, um, they're all really good at explaining the science of how our minds, uh, minds and bodies work and how they heal. So are you a healer? Uh, are you called to be a healer? Are you a spiritual seeker? It seems that many people are becoming more interested in holistic approaches to health and well-being these days. And many of you who are listening to this or reading the written version are probably highly sensitive people. And HSPs are often lean towards the healing arts or are drawn or called toward the healing arts and helping professions. And a Reiki is an amazing tool for doing our own emotional, mental, physical healing work. And it's a great way to help our families, friends, animals, my cats love it, and even as a, a professional healer. So I'm hoping to spark more interest as well as a better understanding of what Reiki is and show that it's really a legitimate mind-body tool <clears throat> for health and well-being. I'm also hoping to spark your curiosity and maybe even help you realize that you're called to be a healer. Many people learn mind-body methods because they're spiritual seekers and using spiritual and healing techniques to expand their consciousness, their connection with the divine, while some others feel called. So what is it for you? Okay, so what's Reiki? Throughout human history, there have been energy healing practices. Many people discount the technique, saying it's just new age BS, it's a crock, whatever, you can't do energy healing. But let's start with our belief that this coffee cup, you can't see it, but this coffee cup is solid. 
but we know that the coffee cup is actually made of atoms, right? We will all learn this in science class. When we go down with microscopes, powerful microscopes, there's nothing but the building blocks are atoms. And your, our bodies are made of atoms too. Your dog's made of atoms. Everything's made of atoms. And we believe that this coffee cup, your computer, your phone, your desk, whatever, wherever you are right now, we think they're all solid, but they're not. And atoms aren't solid things. If you remember from science class, they're little collections of protons and electrons, and they're flying around a nucleus. Except we, we now know that all those atomic bits are fast, highly charged little bits of energy. Sometimes they act like particles, and sometimes they act like waves, but they're just energy and none of them are touching. It's energy flying around on a very tiny scale, and there's mostly, actually mostly space down there. So science even shows us that there's a field of energy in which we're essentially embedded. And our thoughts are energy too. I mean, you consider that your thoughts are electricity and chemicals kind of flying around your brain and your nervous system. Um, and every thought starts a whole cascade of electrochemical messages through your whole body that actually tr um, trigger this cascade all the way down to your DNA. I, I, I really love all this energy stuff. So what does it say about energy healing techniques and mind-body techniques? So biotherapies, the biofield therapies, um, these fall under the umbrella of energy healing, um, energy psychology. There are a lot of new terms now for the same mind-body. They're talking about mind-body methods for healing. And there's a whole collection of different techniques for working with energy. But the point being that energy psychology, mind-body tools and methods are recognized by the National Institutes of Health. They're recognized by the U.S. Veterans Administration. It's considered a generally safe therapy. And they're working on getting mind-body tools approved for treatment with um, veterans who have PTSD. And Energy psychology is considered an evidence-based treatment. In fact, there are more than 100 research studies published in peer-reviewed journals, which is a gold standard. There are more than 100 peer-reviewed studies that show the effectiveness of mind-body, energy psychology, energy medicine methods. And let's put that into context. In the field of psychology, there are more than 400 identified forms of psychotherapy, and most of them have little or no research to validate their effectiveness. But what we're seeing is when the energy psychology techniques, and I would say Reiki falls under that umbrella, there is research supporting the safety and effectiveness of it. So Dr. William Bankston is a sociologist at St. Joseph's College in New York, and he's been studying hands-on healing for 35 years. He's a skeptic, and he got into it because a healer um, cured, or cured um, a back injury, the back pain that he had that was debilitating, never to return. And so he wanted to know how in the world does this stuff work? Why does it, does it work? Why does it work? How does it work? And he has shown that mice can be healed from cancer reliably. In fact, his studies have been replicated at at least, at least 10 times at major university laboratories and medical schools. And in fact, his mice developed immunity to cancer following their treatment. This is big. This is really big. 
Now, so he's been able to show that the cancer can reliably be cured. He cannot, he has not been able to identify the mechanism. We don't exactly know how it happens. So I also want to tell you about an article that was published just last October in 2017. It was in the journal, the professional journal, Issues in Mental Health Nursing. And the article titled Mental Health Wellness and Biotherapies, an Integrative Review, looked at 30 studies that were conducted between 2014 and 2016. They were specifically looking at healing touch and Reiki techniques. What they found in these studies was that healing touch and Reiki are safe and effective non-toxic, non-invasive, safe, effective treatments. None of the participants had adverse, ref um, adverse effects or negative side effects. And you don't see this in um, pharmaceutical research, I can tell you. They found that these methods were effective for reducing anxiety and stress. And we know that stress uh, is one of the biggest killers. These methods were also, also shown to improve mood, relaxation, and enhanced overall mental health wellness. I think that's pretty cool. Now, Reiki and other energy healing mind-body techniques are starting to spread throughout the U.S. and the healthcare system now, and we're starting to see it offered in places like the University of Washington Medical Center. Uh, we're seeing complementary health departments show up in places like Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And in fact, I saw a list, it was like six pages long, of hospitals in the U.S. that offer Reiki. And we're, so we're beginning to see a return to holistic approaches being integrated into mainstream healthcare, which I think is great. So that's it for your science lesson today. I just wanted to share a little bit about exciting research that's being done with energy healing and mind-body therapies. Uh, if you want to look at more of those studies, you can go to the website for the Association of Comprehensive Energy Psychology. They have a research section where you can look at all the um, published studies and reviews of energy psychology techniques. Okay, so what I love about these techniques is most you can learn to tap into yourself and to do your own healing as well as helping others. And I think this is profound. So if you're curious about learning how to do that, how to tap into your own natural, powerful mind, body skills to improve your health and well being, then go to my website at www.susanfranklinpsyd.com and click on the Reiki Retreats tab where you'll get more information about my upcoming training and, as well as the registration link. I still have early bird rates and gifts available, so go there now. And I will so look forward to seeing you at that June 8 through 10 training and getting you on your path to better health and well-being. Okay, I'm Dr. Sue Franklin. Thank you so much for listening. I will see you next time. Be well.